So this is a guy called Alex Steele. He's a, a British welder. He's gone all the way over to America as well. Um, and he's actually, I, I love the fact his surname's Steele and he's a blacksmith. I just think it's like the coolest combination ever. Um, I've been watching for a number of years now and he's really, really talented. I mean, the guy's got insane level skills. Uh, I would love, love to spend a week with this guy and just absorb all his knowledge uh, and have a go with all his machines because, wow, I would love to make a really nice sword. It'll never happen, though. Uh, DM him, tell him that I want to do that, but it'll never happen. Uh, but, yeah, so the first part of this, he uh, made a Damascus billet uh, um, out of titanium, which is going to be really, really hard. So this is part two, and I think he's going to make some like really cool rings. It keeps popping up on my feed, and I, I've just got to watch it, so I thought, you know what, sod it, we will watch it now. Welcome back to part two of making titanium Damascus. In the last episode, we bloody well Look did it. That. We have grade two and grade... How gorgeous is that colouring on that billet? It is like the most amazing colour ever. Grade five titanium Damascus. We've only done the bare minimum so far. It's forge welded into a straight laminate stack, but I want to go further. And so this is the beginning of us sharing and documenting the process of figuring out how we can go all the way to making crazy mosaic patterns out of this titanium, experimenting with other metals and alloys within it as well. Step one for today is on this original billet. I want to get the mild steel jacket off of there. Now I must say it looks remarkably well stuck. Oh, that looks so nice. It looks so, so nice. To the titanium, which does leave me wondering, maybe there's gonna be the opportunity to actually do that steel and titanium forge welded combination that I tried to do six years ago. So much experimentation, I can't wait to get stuck into. There was definitely some sort of bond between the titanium and the steel, but it's clearly not super strong. That was like so much effort. I wonder if what we're seeing on the corners is the result of that little metal squirting incident we had towards the end of the last episode. Perhaps yeah, that that's weird. where that molten titanium came from. It looks incredibly light coloured. I like to think is a result of that argon purge. It almost looks like it's been painted with a model paint. A Feels like we're breaking a, apart some ancient rock. As you can see at the back of the billet, there's a very big cavity. It even appears we have a minor crack right here. So something's definitely gone wrong, because the rest of it doesn't look at all cracked. Pretty neat to be able to see the grain structure of really? the titanium in this little cracked bit. And there is what the titanium billet looks like out of its jacket. And it looks a lot worse absolutely everywhere here on the back than it does at the front. The front looks really quite clean, but despite that, there's still... He had his own TV show. I, I did not know that. I had no idea. I know he's been doing the YouTube channel for a long time. He's got a lot of subscribers. I didn't know he had his own TV show. I, I, unfortunately, I never got to see that. That's a shame. Some what looks to be surface cracks on the corners. I'm going to take a slice off of this original end. In fact, maybe two, just as keepsakes. And then I'm going to grind and chip off all the rest of the bad stuff before it goes back in the forge to see how far we can forge it without the pattern splitting apart and start doing some interesting stuff to it. Oh my gosh, that sounds awful. This is miserable. It is just things. not cutting. Oh, the blade is so dull, it's gone on the right angle. How are the teeth looking after that expedition? Well, they don't feel very sharp anymore, that's for sure. Oh, that was a brand new blade. That took a solid 15 minutes to cut. Ooh, I think this titanium Damascus is gonna be fun in so many unexpected <laughs> ways. <laughs> There's the block with all the crud ground off. Forge is hot, I'm gonna chuck it in, and we're gonna forge it down into some flat bars so that we can increase this layer count. That is so nice, I love forging titanium. I just got wow. it forged out. So cool to see the pattern come through, but something kind of novel is happening here. You see how on this top surface, we are seeing the layers? That's not really ideal. This is moving in a different way to steel. What's happening here 
is the innards of it are squishing out further than the top surface is. And the downside to it is that we're not gonna get the density of pattern in the edge that we otherwise might because it's being flowed up towards the top surface. It could have something to do with the dimensions of the billet that we actually started with because it was a square. But anyway, what I now want to do is anneal it. And so I was a smart chap and I actually Googled how to anneal titanium. And it seems pretty simple. Heat to 700 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and air cool it. Fortunately, we've got just the right tool for that. Oh yeah, 700, boom. She's gone. And I'm sure it's obvious why I want to anneal it. It instantly destroyed that bandsaw blade. And I'm very nervous about what it's going to do to any sort of machining equipment. And so I want it as soft as possible. And in fact, mm. what I went ahead and did yesterday evening, as a result of seeing how hard it was to cut, is I called up a few saw blade companies, try and see if we can get something a little better for this. The blade we had in it was a 6 10 skip tooth blade. They make these blades with a variable pitch. So you can see here it's really coarse. There it's a little bit finer. And I got a couple different answers. At least one of the answers was consistent. Try a coarser tooth. The second place suggested that I use a blade designed for, and I quote, the nasty So they recommended a dual supreme. It says it's made for exotics. We'll see if it can handle this stuff what tomorrow. So for now, while we anneal the other bit of titanium, I'm gonna be over here making progress on our next billet. We need more billets for more experimentation. It's not cheap stuff either. This can air cool. The billet one is cooling down nicely. Billet two is plumbed up to the argon tank. We're gonna put two liters per minute through it. We got flow. And in our first uh, episode of Titanium... I would strongly, strongly recommend checking out part one. If you want me to do part one, let me know. But it's very, very interesting. Really good episode. Damascus, I tried welding it at 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the billet took a radioactive piss all over the workshop. We're gonna go a little bit colder, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, as the instructions suggest. Good time. <laughs> right, we're bang on, 2,007 degrees, that'll do. Here we go. Woohoo! it well, did not squeeze out. Whoa, well, I clearly missed something. Did that just ooze out that front hole? At least it didn't spray out. Seeing things like this makes you nervous and also begs some very important questions. Hey Siri, what's the melting temperature of titanium? 1,668 degrees Celsius. 1,600 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, please. Oh my gosh, it just exploded out the forge. What? what? Oh, I dropped my phone. Oh goodness. 2,912 degrees Fahrenheit. We're 900 degrees Fahrenheit away from the melting temperature of titanium. Why is this happening then? What is going on? I would love to hear from you if any of you guys have ideas. Why is this stuff melting so far below its melting temperature? Heat number two. Right, turn this off now. Apart from the funky stuff out the end, it's much the same as the last time. I'm gonna let it air cool, heat it back up to 700 Celsius, hold it, and then let it air cool again so that it hopefully also anneals. While it cools, onto billet one. We've gotta get all the titanium oxides off it. You know I like to avoid the grinding room when I can, so I'd like to see if we can do it in the mill, but I know this material is gonna have some surprises for us. What I've learned about machining titanium is, because it has a lower thermal conductivity than steel, when your cutter takes a chip, less of the heat from the friction is taken away from this whole assembly in the chip. When the steel chip goes off, it takes some of the heat from the equation with it. The titanium chip, not right. so much. So, with those suggestions in mind, we're gonna try a lower relative RPM than we would with steel. Now, it also suggested heavy depths of cut, as well as making sure that the workpiece is well supported because titanium is quite flexy. And a result of that final point, it means I can't just go ahead and clamp this in the vise and expect it to work. I think I need to make soft jaws. These will hopefully help increase the rigidity of the work holding and mean that we can take the cuts that we need and hopefully the cuts are just gonna be beautiful. Right, you wanna see some shenanigans? How about this no, for a shenanigan? You see that depth of cut? Well, follow it all the way to there. Yeah, something's not quite right. The end mill slipped out of the collet. Delightful. Thanks to the blunder, I have a deep side of the soft jaw and a shallow side of the soft jaw. They're just going to support the workpiece, easy peasy. I did, um, decided I am going to give it. I have actually hand forged my own dagger before, so I have done some forging. Just a very quick touch on the grinder, then we're gonna make the sides parallel before we try and face it. We're not going to start a titanium fire. We're going to try very, very hard to avoid it. All this has got to go. Pretty good. Right, oh, in she goes. 
All right, this is going to be a pretty worn out 12 millimeter carbide end mill. It was cutting steel at 1200 RPM. Let's turn that down to 700 to play it safe. Touch off 1.5 millimeters. Hey, that doesn't seem so bad. It's doing it. Where is the drama? I see none. It's cutting beautifully. Wow. Supposedly titanium chips are dangerous, just like magnesium. Woohoo! Look at it go. Yeehaw! I missed my mill. Gonna try this small 20 mil indexable face mill first. 0.7 millimeter depth of cut. First impressions. That seems totally fine. Uh oh, we got sparks. We got sparks. I don't like that. One of the things I read online is a concern with titanium is that chip getting so hot that it sticks to the carbide insert. Don't want that to happen. Ah! Ah, it's going everywhere! Ow! Ow! Ah! That is. Terrifying! Ow! Why Ow! It got me in my <laughs> armpit! We've got some worn inserts. Oh, I could be very naughty. So looking at the inserts, they definitely wear quicker than they do on steel. Now that I have to flip over the other side, I'm gonna see if we can uh, take the cutter size up a notch. Wow, that's good. That must be like two, three hundred pounds. Funny stuff, you can see the layers just from the machining with how the different layers are cutting differently. Hard to get good surface finishes, but I don't care about surface finish, I just care about getting the oxides off. Let's see if the saw will cut it this time around. Now it's been annealed and there is no titanium oxide on it. Please cut. No, the saw Ooh. stalled. Why? No, it's definitely not cutting. Ooh. Oh, it is a little bit. Go on, Betty! You're almost there. Yes! All right, I'm gonna try turning it up on end. Maybe we strip the teeth, maybe it works well. Ugh! It hates it! Can't be cutting at angles like that, that's no good. Let's see how this fares. Oh Look at the amount of wastage! That's sad. Six cuts and we have already destroyed the blade. Ah! I mean, just look at that last one. This oh material is something else. So here is a little bit of an idea of the layer density we're going to end up with. Bit hard to see as the surface finish isn't great, but what this is going to be is 150 layers when it's all welded together. Now I was looking at that little stack up right there and I thought it looked quite small, so I did some quick uh, napkin maths and compared to the billet that we started with, those original 51 by 51 millimeter squares, in one single forge weld, clean, recut and stack operation, we have lost 49.2% of the material. We've gone from 130,000 wow. millimeters cubed to 67,000 millimeters cubed. That is bloody catastrophic. That is insane. Making titanium Damascus is so expensive, so wasteful, and so inconvenient. And I'm having a bloody great time. You look like you enjoy it. <laughs> this time around, I'm going to experiment with using an uber thin box. This is 0.6 millimeter steel. All right, let's stack this stuff up and get it in. Look how teeny weeny those little welds are. So let's get this in the forge and get it welded. Okay, welding, 1900 Fahrenheit. Oh. oh, look, it's still smushed out, even though it's a lower temperature. What? Look how mushy it is. Alec, you've been drinking your milk. It appears like you're still growing. Look how much bigger your hands are. No, no, no. The billet is just shrinking. All right, let's get the mild seal off. <laughs> okay, this is a nightmare. This is taking about 10 times as much time as getting the two millimeter steel jacket off. So I have found a definite no-no when making titanium Damascus. Don't make a jacket from super thin steel. 0.6 mil <laughs> is too thin. Two millimeters did work fine. Oof. I think the trick is gonna be experiment with millimeter and a half or millimeter. The jacket eventually came off and I cleaned it up with the cup stone on that nine inch grinder. This billet A has 125 layers. And what we're now going to do is forge it down into some round bar 
before twisting it. Can you twist titanium Damascus steel without it delaminating? See, that's the concern. Are the bonds between those 125 layers strong enough to withstand? I'm surprised he's putting it into a round bar. I thought I'd be doing flat bar. Why round? Being twisted. So we hit the diagonals to make a rough octagon and it doesn't look like it's come apart yet. That is fully trying to shear those welds apart, but it so far looks like it's staying together. Get my tools ready. I'll get this sized before, <laughs> before we need it. Oh, is it twisting? All right. Twisting titanium Damascus. Oh! <laughs> oh, wow! Look wow, at that. Like Steel bug. will usually allow me to make a little reduction in size up here and still twist down there. Nothing's twisting here. It's only trying to shear off there. So we're going to need some heat control with a torch. It looks like um... a... <laughs> no, it's going to shear off if I'm not thing? careful. Maybe I just need to cool that end more. Oh my gosh. Come on, don't you dare break on me. This has been too much work. Oh, that does not look good. It looks like it's screaming it wants to rip apart. Look at that cold shut in there. I mean, this looks really disgusting. It did not like that at all. I'm gonna let that cool, and then I'm gonna hit oh, it with a grinder to smooth out all these nasty bits so that we're not pounding any of those potential cracks deeper into the material. Is it me, or does it just shrink every time you look at it? Goodness. All right, let's forge it down. Have you swapped that out with a bit of wood and, to see if I'd notice? Because that looks like a bit of bloody wood. <laughs> it looks like driftwood. I'll, I'll be honest, that did actually look a lot like wood, so... <laughs> Right, we're going to put this in the lathe next. But because of the challenge of the machining titanium, I'd quite like to be able to run coolant on it. This lathe has the ability to run coolant, but I've never been able to get it working. So how about a little investigation, eh? Oh, oh. I see one issue. There's not enough coolant in there. Ah. That might be wrong. Work. I wonder whether it's as simple as there's just a clog up here. Oh, look at it go! Yeah, baby! Why did you stop? Oh, it'd be good if we could, like, vacuum it out. <laughs> Jamie, how well can you suck? <laughs> Just shut your face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy, got in my mouth. I don't want to do what I think we have to do. I think we have to blow the snot out with an air, with the air compressor. <laughs> Jamie! <laughs> I put hair down it. Did it come out? <laughs> the air definitely came out, thanks. Well, that was just a delight. In short, I changed the hose, fiddled with the pump a bit, and now we actually have coolant. Yippee! Yay! <laughs> It's cutting delightfully! Shock horror, coolant is useful for cutting materials. This means we're gonna have to bloody mess around with the coolant pump on the bridge port as well, well so that we can have coolant on it. <laughs> that is beautiful. Right, let's have a look at how this pattern looks with 125 layers. We can use the torch. A little bit of heat creates an oxide film on the top of the titanium that refracts the light differently, showing beautiful colors. You sure us used the torch in the last episode. We're gonna use it this time. But you guys told me about another little secret that titanium holds, which is using a DC power supply, you can anodize titanium to get even more crazy colors than we can with the torch. And in the next episode, we're gonna try that. Oh, yeah! This just makes me so happy. So many possibilities and so much exciting stuff to come. But now we need to make something from it, a finished article or two, in fact. So I'm going to pick the best spot oh, and we're going to make, make two titanium Damascus rings. Oh, she's making it. Right.
Sick. Oh wow. That's gorgeous. These rings so are the first two finished items from Titanium Damascus that I've ever made. And guess what I'm going to do with this, Jamie? Put it up for sale on Squarespace. Yes, because I could really do with some extra, extra revenue right now that I am spending a fortune on materials and... Machines. Yes. Well, so Add new product. Tried to make it one of the more common male ring sizes. It's a nine. Size nine. There's the title. Add a quick skew. Price. Upload a picture. Ooh. Publish. And that right there Ooh, is wow. just how easy it is to I add a product that you've made that. for sale right from your phone. In the next episode, we're going to be seeing if we can do mosaic pattern welding with a titanium Damascus. See if the bonds between layers can handle those stresses. But in the meantime, I hope that you go and build yourself a Squarespace website. Just as I showed, it is effort. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, that was really impressive. The, the guy's got like insane level skills. Uh, I, I would love to spend a week just at his place just to playing with all the toys so but yeah uh part three i'm looking forward to that i'll uh, i'll definitely get that up on the channel when uh, when that comes out guys